Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so b before we get into the, the details of this uh, presentation, a quick background about or quick introduction about why I choose this topic, uh, about monetizing data and why I'm building a business case. Um, I personally see there are four main reasons why I picked this uh, topic. So if you take any IT projects, for instance, there's a lot of noise or a lot of focus on code, documentation, and all those things. But unfortunately, in my experience, I have seen that data is like a forgotten entity. However, I believe data is the main deliverable why these IT projects are in first place. You can't, I in IT, information can't be derived if you don't have data. Well, so I believe data should be the foremost uh, or the topmost item which has to be given focus. So that's the reason, one of the first reason why I choose this, uh, uh, the, the topic which is pertaining to data. Uh, most of the second reason being the most of the projects in my experience, I have worked in almost like in the, almost for about 20 years in companies like SAP, Accenture, GE, and uh, Shell, um, and in Canada, North America, US, India, uh, uh, Germany, and other countries. So most, in my experience, I have seen that when most projects have been challenged or they ended up as a failure because of data issues. It's not primarily because of people or something. People have, uh, the team was not able to uh, uh, estimate the complexities involved in data, whether it's data migration, conversion, virtualization, whatever you can, integration, whatever you call it. Uh, I personally see, uh, in my experience, most of the projects have been challenged or failed because of data issues. Let's see is, while coding is pretty complex, I, I'm not disputing that, data is more complex as well. Uh, it is contextual and it is subjective to the stakeholders uh, as part of the project. Uh, the intended use of the data might be very different from the actual use. Like for instance, in many places I have seen that the field in which a particular transaction is, uh, is associated with might not be the actual intention in which it is being used. And when the data has been uh, uh, data has been interfaced to downstream applications, the intended use of the data again might be different from the actual use. And one more reason being spreadsheets. When data is taken from the system and put into spreadsheets, so you never you have no control about how the data is being used, consumed, interpreted, and decisions are being made. So. So the, when the metadata model is missing, when the, uh, from the way the data is originated to the way the data is distributed and consumed, and ultimately it goes to non-system applica uh, applications like Excel, for example, you have it becomes very very complex. Of course, there are many more reasons. Finally, I believe uh, when whenever I worked in data project, uh, uh, the stakeholders, especially the people who are paying the money for the project. Uh, were sitting on top of the head of the uh, of the project manager or myself as an architect. Well, said, tell me the benefit. How much money will I make? Uh, what is the profit uh, will I get by doing this data project and all those things? So this uh, presentation is also a kind of an education uh, to, uh, or my sharing my experience about how I manage these kind of situations. About well, how did I answer these kind of uh, questions to the senior management where. They were expecting at the end of the project, I see $20 million savings, but when they were actually not getting it, and how did I, uh, how did I educate them, or how did, I, uh, uh, how did I convince them about the need to continue these kind of projects even in future? So th these are the four main uh, uh, reasons why I chose this topic on data monetization and how we can build a business case, not a project implementation, but just a business case to convince the management about the need to have a data quality project. As the presentation for today goes, I have split this whole presentation, which I have a very short presentation slide, uh, about 15, 20 slides, into three main sections. One is, I'll give a quick background about this presentation. In fact, the whole thing, I have driven it like a case study. I have worked for an oil field services company, and I've taken the, my experience from there, and, uh, and the whole presentation is based on a case study. So it's not something, a theoretical information, it's real practical information which I'm sharing. The second thing is I'm going to show you the execution methodologies about how I develop the uh, how I uh, uh, develop the problem statement and the opportunity statement, and how we are able to give a compelling business case to the management about the need to fund a data quality project. And finally, 
the lessons learned in this uh, in this experience about including some of the things which I mentioned earlier about convincing management about the communication uh, the communication messages and all those things. So what I learned from this uh, project, which I want to share with you. Um, go to the next slide. The next slide is not much, so it's just. Uh, So as I said before, this presentation is basically about my work uh, from CATIS, which uh, which is an, which was an IT advisory work, which I where I work for an oil field services company uh, as an advisor to the CIO, uh, who called me to uh, who called CATIS to address this data problem in their SAP ECC system. He didn't know what this data problem was. He just called me, hey, we have some data problem here. People, are, people always complain about, we have data problems, we have data problems. Can you come and see what it is and what we can do about it? Um, so the goal of the project, like since most of you might be knowing, these days the oil, price, uh, oil prices have fallen below $50. And <laughs> so every, the CIA, the IT especially, has been constrained with funding. Uh, so he wanted to build a strong business case without spending much time and noise and uh, this all this uh, uh, administrative things uh, to find uh, to get uh, funding and business support. Which, when I mean stakeholder support, I am generally talking about the business support. Uh, for this work, uh, a small funding and time was approved, including uh, the time from Catis or my time, and a few people from the business, the senior people like the managers and the directors, were uh, were, uh, were tasked to work with me to come up with this business case. To tell you that uh, due to confidentiality reasons, uh, the details presented here are slightly different. Uh, I have taken a different business process than the one I presented there. Uh, the one which I used in the, uh, in the oil field services company was related to HR business process. Well, while here, what I'll be doing is I'll be taking a sales business process. But the methodology is pretty much the same. How I developed the problem statement, what did I do to uh, translate, to, uh, to refine and define the problem statement into a concrete metric driven um, the, uh, 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 problem statement or the opportunity statement, taking the goal into consideration, and uh, what kind of questions we asked to make sure that uh, um, the, the final business case which we are putting together is aligned with the, with the goal statement. So when the first meeting, uh, uh, during the first meeting with the CIO, so he, he, st he started explaining me, uh, telling me about the data problem. He, he started explaining about the org structures and all those things. So in fact, before he brought me on board, so he wanted me to know, do you have a, a roadmap about how do you want to do this project kind of thing, even if you are getting this uh, stakeholder uh, approval for this work? So while the business case was was for a specific assignment. While the while the for a specific assignment called business case, I had to also look at uh, the long term roadmap. And this is where I have developed where uh, the Catius value propositions rules before tools, which which I propose was implemented here. So when I look at uh, rules, we just if we, uh, use the Lean Six Sigma methodologies, define, measure, demic, or whatever you can call it. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So we said, I, uh, we told the uh, CIO that uh, this part of the business, part of the business case, would be only till the analyze phase. So at the end of, the, if you look at step number ten, at the end of this, we are going to uh, provide a business uh, uh, case which includes some deliverables to implement this in future. So whether you want to hire our services or to work with other people, so that's fine, but we are going to provide a business case which includes a problem statement, opportunity statement, a project plan, and an implementation plan about how we want to do it for st stage four and five, which is improve and control. So this is what we did. We always, the goal which I had from the CIO was, and with a few business stakeholders was, was here. Improved organization and control was a collection structure, processing storage, and delivery of data uh, for improved information across the enterprise. The key here was uh, enterprise. So one of the things we were able to sell to the senior management was the word enterprise, because we felt that during the initial discussion we had with a few stakeholders from the business, as well as some pre-work we did outside the work by, by talking to some people offline, uh, we felt that this company had a lot of line of businesses 